Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, the first fraternity. And Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> we also have the brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi. Yo, yo! No, no! <laughs> and Omega Psi Phi Fraternity oh, 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 oh. As well as Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> we also have Phi Us. Sorry, I'm Richard Phi Beta Sigma. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. And Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated. <laughs> which happened to have been founded at one of the four HBCUs in the state of Maryland. And so I appreciate them. And I also think I see Al it's an Alpha Nu Omega Fraternity. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> It is just an honor to represent the 43 members of the Legislative Black Caucus. And if I can ask that you take one moment of silence for one of our members, uh, Delegate Hattie Harrison, who represented the 45th District in Baltimore City, uh, who passed away um, last week. So let's just take one moment of silence for Ms. Hattie. Thank you. We're here tonight because we are asking for justice and equality for Maryland's four historically black colleges and universities. Now, this issue did not start with the O'Malley Brown administration, but under the leadership of the O'Malley Brown administration, it can end. We can bring parity and justice to our universities. We don't need a court of law to tell us to do the right thing. We have a history, we have documented history of the level of underfunding that our HBCUs received here in the state of Maryland because Maryland, like many other southern states, had an unfortunate history of segregation, discrimination, marginalization of African Americans. And our institutions suffered as a result of that marginalization. And all we're asking for is parity. Does that mean that because the universities receive the same amount approximately that the other universities receive now, that that's good enough? Absolutely not. Because there is documented proof that over several decades, several decades, these HBCUs have been underfunded. And the cumulative effect of that underfunding has led to inferior facilities, smaller programs, decreased um, levels of full-time faculty on these campuses, as well as um, a limited access to student financial aid. Now, I don't know how many of you could afford just to go to college without any assistance from your university or your state, but I was not one of those people. And so for many of us, in order that our families have an opportunity to live a better future than the ones we live, we need to make sure that they get educated. And our young people are choosing to go to historically black colleges and universities. And we don't want to make that choice an unwise choice. It is a great choice to go to the, an HBCU. <laughs> graduate over 60% of the black engineers that receive degrees are receiving them from, from historically black colleges and universities and those are the careers and jobs that will carry the state of Maryland into the future. A, a uh, um, investment in the HBCUs is an investment in the future of Maryland.